morning, friends. Happy to be here this morning and knowing of seeing all of you out, believing that the Lord is with us today, giving us some little shadow that it won't be so hot here in the tabernacle for the morning service. And now, we uh, believe, is there children, has the children been dismissed from their class yet? I've seen some little fellows, and I just wondered if they had dismissed the classes back into their their other places, into their Sunday school rooms. Now, pray for me. I've got a great decision I was supposed to make last night, and I have to make it today. And let the church pray. I got a, I got a meeting coming up next is right on the Iron Curtain line in Germany. And um, so uh, it's a little touchy, and uh, pray for me. And so uh, it's, uh, we just start right away in that big cricket stadium in Germany that Hitler made uh, just before the war. Nice big place, see 80,000 people, and we can have it for 10 nights straight. And so we're hoping to get started in there right away and then over to La Salle Lorraine, France next, then to Berlin, come back to, I mean, Berlin between that and uh, in France. Then we come back to Lord Willing and the convention in Chicago begins, I think, the 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th is my part in Chicago of the convention at the, the Swedish church. And then there are... Mr. Bose, some of you from around Chicago, they got a convention that was coming off this next beginning 1st of August, or 1st of September it is, in Sweden. And I'm so happy to know that they're vote for me to come over and it was universal and 100%. I was glad of that. But I got to either go there or down here now. You pray that the Lord will lead me just exactly the place where most souls will be saved and the best will be done for the kingdom of God. Now, they're having a convention up there and, and they, in Sweden, and he said we'd have 25, 35,000 people to start with at the convention, and many of them unsafe people. And then down here in Germany, well, they got a stadium that sees 80,000. Of course, we, in Switzerland, where we just left, we, would, we had a wonderful meeting there. Many of you probably have never heard yet. The Lord blessed us mightily. We had 50,000 converts in five nights at, at, at Zurich, Switzerland. And um, so, Brother Jack Schuler, many of you know him. He's Methodist, old Bob Schuler's boy. They're in Belfast now. And, and they say they're just turning the place upside down over there for the gospel. And even greater than what Billy Graham had in his meeting, Jack is a very fine young fellow, full of zeal and love, and he, he just so sincere at it that I believe he's a great servant of the Lord. And pray for Brother Schuler and, um, <clears throat> and uh, is, uh, 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 Jack Schuler and... Um, Jack MacArthur also is with him. Brother Jack MacArthur is a great preacher, too. And there I have the churchman said it's the greatest revival that's ever hit uh, Ireland. So we're so go to prayer daily for those for those men. They're both young men and under around 40, I guess. They're under families and so forth and good, solid gospel teachers. And we love them. And now... I, I pray that you won't forget me, that, that God will let me make the right decision right now. These times where you don't know which way to turn. Did you ever get in them places? <laughs> I believe Paul got in that place one time, didn't he? It's between two straits. And when he was going over, why he saw an angel in a vision and told him, come over to Macedonia. So the Lord still has his angel, doesn't he? <laughs> if, um, I can just be as humble in my heart about it as Paul was. And now I'm Tonight, remember the gospel service this year at the Tabernacle. Everybody come out. You around Louisville. I'm speaking for church the open door tonight for a couple hours at uh, 7.30 till 9.30 at uh, Brother Cobbles. I was going to come twice here, and then he, such a nice man, and he called up. Uh, uh, Brother Cobbles, he's a very fine gentleman, brother. You, I'm sure you're a very fine brother. 
and uh, just couldn't hardly turn him down like that. And pray. Above all things, pray. And pray that God will give us the right decision to make. Now, before we start the gospel message, we got a morning we're to dedicate little children. And I got uh, a little fellow here to dedicate to, to the Lord. Now, many times in many churches, can you hear all right way back if you can? Is it all right? These fans sure I just, you can't hear yourself. Oh, well, that's all right. I'm afraid of perish for that. <laughs> so, uh, they, uh, the little children, sometimes they sprinkle them in the church when they're little bitty babies. And, um, uh, of course, that come from uh, the Catholic Church by christening the little children or baptizing them, as they call them when they're just little fellows. The Methodist Church brought it out and, of infant baptism and many, and I think several more, I think that's the difference between the Nazarene and the old-fashioned Methodist was the infant baptism and then the little break-offs and so forth. But whatever way, it doesn't, I don't think it matters too much. Because after all, I think Calvary spells the thing out right there to all of it. That's right. Because Jesus died there to save little children and save the world. And a little child, no matter what kind of a parent it's got, uh, how sinful, that wouldn't make any difference. For the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses him. See? And this is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. That baby cannot repent. It don't know how to repent. It has no reasons of being here for of its own. It can't tell you why it's here. But God sent it here. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses it the very moment that it comes into the Amen. world. And it's until it's the age of accountability, then it knows right and wrong. And then what it does, it's got to repent for what it knows that it's done wrong. That's right. Amen. So some of them, Franklin, and think they don't go to heaven. And there's a teaching that says if the baby's born of a Holy Ghost parent, well, the baby go to heaven, but if it isn't, there's no more to it. The baby just is no more. That's strictly an error. What difference does it make where it's the Holy Ghost parents with all sexual desire and the baby's born the same way? So it's all born in sin, shaped in iniquity, come to the world speaking lies. That, that's the scriptural terms of it. So, and then the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses and makes an atonement for that child. If it died, be perfectly, go right into the presence of God if it was born from the most sinful parents in the world. Until it's the age of accountability where it knows right and wrong, and then what it does from then, it's got to be forgiven for that. It's got to ask its own repentance from then on. Amen. But while it's a baby, now, the way we try to follow here at the tabernacle is the only place in the world that I go, I preach doctrine. It's here at the tabernacle because this is our church. We preach doctrine here to keep the people lined up. Other men in their churches, they preach whatever they believe. And they're my brothers. And we might differ a little bit, but we're still brothers. It's just the same. And, but here in the tabernacle, we preach uh, what we think is scriptural doctrine. And in there, we see for the dedication of children, what we call a dedication, the only time in the Bible that we can find out a word in the New Testament that where little children was ever uh, had anything to do, or Christ had anything to do in it in a ceremony, was he'd take them up in his arms and laid his hands up on them and blessed them and said, Suffer little children to come to me. Forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, we are left, as we understand, to carry on the work that he come to, to uh, accomplish. His death at Calvary, he was with us, and he went from, come out of God into the world, went back from God, uh, from the world into God, and come again in the form of the Holy Spirit, and with us, in us, to the end of the world, carrying out in his church the same work that he did when he was here on earth. And by that, we take our children one to the other, to the ministers, and they pray over them, lay their hands up on them, and dedicate them to God, just a little ceremony to say that we appreciate what the Lord has done for us for the little children. Now, if your little one has been sprinkled or whatever way it is at your church, thank you. We don't say one thing against that. It's all right. But scripturally, we only find one place that's where Jesus blessed in himself. That I shall read, the Lord willing. In the, in the word here, we find in St. Luke's uh, 
I believe it's the uh, the 10th chapter, and beginning with the 13th verse. And they brought young children unto him, that he should touch them. And his disciples uh, uh, rebuked them, they brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased, and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms and put his hands upon them and blessed them. Isn't that lovely? He said, Now suffer the little children to come to me. Don't forbid them. For such, such like that little child is the kingdom of God. And he took them in his arms and blessed them. Now, how we would love this morning if we could have Jesus sitting in person here on the platform and say, Lord, would you bless my child? Oh, what a, for, for our human eyes and our hearts longing to see that. But he's here anyhow. For he give us the commission to do it. And as we have done, so does he recognize. We receive him. One he sent, receive him as sent, you see. So he's here this morning, and if Sister Gertie will come up to the piano and play our old song we used to sing a long time ago on this, bring them in, bring the little ones to Jesus. I believe it's in the book there somewhere. I'm not sure. Bring the little ones to Jesus. And if you have a baby, a little baby that has not been dedicated and you want to dedicate it this morning, why, we'd be glad to do it. And is there any ministers in the building, preachers, that would just uh, want to walk up and stand with us here while we dedicate these children to the Lord? We'd be glad to have you uh, as you come. All right, is it in the book there? You find it? it is in there. All right, how many of those to bring them in? All right, let's sing it now. Everybody together. While the mothers bring your babies. All right. All right. Bring them in.
Go on her veil and said, Let my last end be like his. God, I pray that you will grant these blessings upon the parents. And now as we go to lay hands upon them, what what a wonderful and how humble that you've made it, Lord, if we, man of this earth, would have the privilege of blessing little children in thy name, knowing this, that what we ask for is granted to us. As we go to bless them, may Jesus be all unseen, person, all omnipotent ones, stand near and bless each child as we lay our hands upon them and offer them to him while we ask that in his name, amen. And now, uh, before leaving home, 
I wrote down three or four little things. I said, I'll wait and see what the Lord would have me to speak on when I got down there. I wrote about six little things down here, little subjects, and I wrote one, put it in my pocket like this. I thought, well, when I get to the pulpit, maybe he'll tell me something to talk on. <laughs> now I'm just as far off as it was up there. So, uh, anyhow, I'll read the scripture here. The Lord help us to understand it. The 14th chapter of St. Luke. And let's begin about the 30, 31st verse of the 14th chapter of St. Luke. Or what king going to make war against another king sitteth not down first and consult whether he is able with ten thousands to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? Or else, while he is either is yet a great way off, he sendeth forth an ambassador and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you, I want you to notice close. At first he said, uh, it's a parable. He said, now there's a king coming, and he's got 20,000 soldiers, and this king is going to meet him, and he's only got 10,000 soldiers. So then the first he sits down and asks if he's ready. Uh, whether he can do it or not. All right. Uh, of you who forsaketh not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. See? I may the Lord add his blessings to this word. Now, shall we bow our heads just a moment? Our Heavenly Father, thou who knowest all things and regardeth not the person of man. For what is man that thou art mindful of? Him? You made man, and he's just like the flower of the field. Today he's beautiful, tomorrow he's cut out, cast into the oven, and he wilts away. And I pray thee, God, to be merciful to us today and let each one take inventory today. We are here as in the house of correction. We're here to learn and know how to live. And let it come forth from thy word today, O eternal God. Many of thy children has gathered in. And many of them has been your children for years. But in that, we all come back to the house of God to learn and to know. And I, your servant, desire to know more about you. And I pray that you'll... Bring the inspiration of the gospel upon all of us, upon thy servants, and that your presence in inspiring us to this building will be so great today that we'll leave in our hearts desiring to be better servants of yours, that it will be profitable for us to be here. Oh, merciful God, grant these blessings in Jesus' name, thy Son. Amen. Now may the Lord add his blessings to the word as we read. I want to take a text this morning at the um, enticing spirit or uh, the word of God. Now, rather a strange uh, subject, but being that it's in the tabernacle. And last Wednesday night, last Sunday morning, I was speaking on uh, a little gospel jubilee. And last Wednesday night, I was preaching on the woman that had the, the tablet over her head, or the, she lost one of her pieces of coin, and she was sweeping the house and trying to find it before her husband comes. And come to find out that that woman was an Oriental-type woman, and she and represented the church. And a wedding band used not to be wore on the finger. It was wore across the head with nine pieces of silver in it. And when a woman become a prostitute, they took out one piece of silver and showed that she was a prostitute. And so this woman had lost one of the pieces, not a prostitute, but her husband had been away, and she was trying to hurry to find that piece, to put it back in her tablet, for when her husband comes, he would know that she had been caught in prostitution. And it would mean a breaking up of home and so forth. And I applied that for a few moments to the church. Lost a lot of great things. And it's time for fathers to come, so we got to hunt them up. Now, 
knowing in the church and our tabernacle, and I, I want to speak on enticing spirits, which is would be really titled demonology. You hear so much about demons of these days, but you hear so little about how to get rid of them. We all are, are well aware that there's devils, but the next thing is how to get rid of that thing. And now uh, there is having, by the grace of God, much opportunity to deal with these things called demons and meeting them at the platform and in daily walk. And I'd like to look into the scripture this morning and find out just what those things are. Now, we've applied it in a healing service all the way to the healing side. Cancer, tumor, cataracts, tuberculosis, all those things are not natural things. They are supernatural and are demons. The scripture plainly vindicates that. But that is demons in the body with growth like cancer. It's got life in it. And the life of that is a demon. Growth of the cataract, the spread of tuberculosis and uh, other diseases. It's demons. That's in physical form. Now this morning we're going to call, talk about demons in spiritual form in the soul. They're in the soul as same as they're in the body. And we're bound to admit that we see them in people's bodies, such as cancers and, and different diseases that's in the human body. Just recently, even cancer has been declared to be a fourth dimension disease. That is in another dimension. Sure, demonology, every disease is a fourth dimension disease. The beginning of it. Now, but now, cancer in the body or cancer in the soul. The demon can come in either place. Now, there's many times in many people with good thoughts that, uh, and good people who try many times to, to rest upon uh, some uh, little theology they have or something that they have been taught since a child and still find that down in their being, down in their soul, that they still have something that's not right. You, many of you are here this morning. No doubt wherever you find Christians gathered together, you find people who have those spirits in them that they, it's undesirable. They don't want them. They say, oh, if I could only quit lying, if I could only quit lusting, if I could only quit this or that. Now, that is devils. And now they come in the form of religion many times. A being at Sunday school, it's a time of teaching. So let's look into this. Now, they come in the form of religion many times. Now, in the scripture once, there was a man by the name of Jehoshaphat, a great man, a religious man. And he went over to another king, which was the king of, of Israel, and he, Jehoshaphat being the king of Judah, and he went down to Ahab, the king of Israel, and they got all buckled up together and made an alliance with one another to go fight up at the Ram of Gilead. And they did it without first praying. Oh, if people could only realize. That's why I come this morning and ask you to remember me as I go overseas. And all things pray. Someone come the other day and said, Brother Branham, do you think it's wrong to do a certain thing? I said, what are you questioning about? See, if there's a question in your mind, leave it alone. Don't do it at all. Just stay with that. When you start to do anything, and if it's a question, whether it's right or wrong, stay away from it. Don't go into it at all. Then you know you're right. Now, all things ought to be considered prayerfully first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added. I am positive sure this morning, if men and women could only get into the position of where their soul, their thinking, their attitude would be perfect in the sight of God, 
time, have for years, we got what we call a lie detector. You can put it on your wrist, set it across your their head, and you can get in there and try your best to make a lie sound like the truth, and it will register negative every time. Because the human was not made to lie. Lying is a deceitful, hard thing, evil thing. I'd rather have a drunkard with me any day than a liar. See? A liar. And your body wasn't made to lie. No matter how sinful you are, you're still a fallen son of God. The most sinful person in this city today, God didn't intend you to be sinful. He wanted you to be a son or daughter of his. You're made up in his own makeup. But sin has caused you to do that. And no matter how much you try to impersonate and try to make a lie seem right, they got a scientific instrument that proves that it's wrong. You can tell it with all the innocence you want to, but it'll still register negative. Because there's a subconscious down in a human being. And that subconscious knows what's truth. And no matter what you're saying out here, that subconscious knows that it's a lie. And it'll register off the subconscious. Therefore, if a man or a woman could ever get their thoughts and their testimony and their lies so lined up with God, amen, until the channel of the Holy Spirit Spirit would be perfectly one with God. What would take place if the man and woman could ever get lined up? Where was the freedom from their heart? With faith from the innermost? Many people come to the altar to be prayed for. They have intellectual faith. They confess their sins and join our church by intellectual faith. They believe it in their, their mind. They believe it because they've heard it. They believe it because they know it's the best policy. But that's not what God looks at. He don't look at your intellectual faith. He looks on the heart, where on the inside, God. And when it comes from the heart, all things are possible then. Your confession meets up with your life. Your life speaks as loud as your confession does. But when your confession says one thing and your life lives another, there's something wrong somewhere. That's because you've got an intellectual faith and not a faith from your heart. And that shows that outside here is a knowledge of God, but inside here is a demon of doubt. I believe in divine healing, but it's not for me, see? I, it could be so, but I don't believe it. Yet, outside you say yes, inside your conscience says no. That same scientific thing would prove that that was the right. Prove it. Notice. When these kings, before they started out, they should have, before Jehoshaphat ever made an alliance with Ahab, he ought to first said, let us pray and see what the will of the Lord is. Give me a preacher. Give me a Christian. Give me a housewife that's a Christian. Give me a farmer or a, a factory worker that will put God first in everything. I'll show you a man who will be successful in despite of all the devil can put on him. He seeks God first. We must have first. But they didn't do it. They were all clouded over because Ahab had a great, bright kingdom and he had um, uh, done a whole lot of things and had his great fineries, his gold and his silver, and been a great successful man, yet an unbeliever. And that's where the world is today. That's where America stands today. That's where the church stands today. We built some of the best churches we've ever built. We've had some of the best polished scholars we've ever had. We've taught some of the best theology and so forth and learned to sing like angels. But yet there's a weakness somewhere. There's a weakness because they've gone out after man's doctrine and enticing spirits instead of coming back to the Word of God. They try to make things pattern like the world. They try to put shiny lights over it, like Hollywood. Here the other day, a famous denomination, the full gospel rim in Kansas City, or I beg your pardon, in Denver, at the convention, is building a million-dollar church. And thousands of missionaries waiting for 50 cents from that thing.
same denomination to carry the gospel into the heathen. What we need today is a missionary minded, God set, Holy Ghost born revival that will have the zeal of God to push on out into the jungle gutter and do something for God. Instead of build big fine churches to try to outshine the neighbor. I'd rather worship in a mission where it have been swept out of a barroom and have the freedom of the Holy Spirit and the love of God burning into the heart and set in the greatest cathedral that we got in the world and be cramped down with man's doctrines and dogmas. We need to say the shaking revival. Get back to the truth. Get back to God's word again. Now, when they went out there, and after a while, Jehoshaphat kind of comes to him and said, said Heaven, let us consult the Lord about this. He said, All right, Ahab did, and he sent down and got hundreds, four hundred fine trained preachers. And he brought them up there and said, These are all prophesiers. And so they went into their enchantments, and they began to call, and they said, Yes, you go on up in peace. The Lord is with you. And then, after all those 400 had give witness that they should go up in peace, yet Jehoshaphat knowing. Do you get it? See, down in that righteous man's heart, there was something told him there was a burr in the salad somewhere. Something was wrong. Ahab said, now we got 400 here. And with one accord, every one of them says, go, the Lord is with you. But Jehoshaphat said, haven't you got one more? He said, well, what do we need with one more? Hey, we got 400 of the best educated men in the country. They're all saying go. That was intellectual. But down in Jehoshaphat's heart, he knew there was something wrong. Now, he said, we got one more. He's Micah. But I hate him. Said he's always saying something evil and it's popping off where he has no business to be. And he's down in the churches and everything. Said, I hate him. Said, go get him. Let's see what he'll say. And when Micah come up, he said, they said, now look, you say the same thing the rest of me. He said, he said, I'll only, here it is. I'll only say what God says. Amen. No matter what your prophet says and what this says, what your church says and what this says, I'll say what God says. God put on my lips and I'll say what he says. What we need today is some more Micah who will say what God says. Notice. So they got him up there. And he said, give me tonight. So that night the Lord met him and he come back the next morning. When the two kings sat in the gate, he said, go on up. He said, go on up. He said, I see Israel like sheep scattered without a shepherd. So this one preacher, all dressed up, walked up and smacked him in the mouth and said, which way did the Spirit of God go when it went out of me? He said, you'll find out when you come back. <laughs> yeah. He said, listen here. He said, we are the servants of God. We're 400 and you're one. But Micah said, I'll tell you where you're troubling. Amen. He said, I saw a vision. Amen. He said, and I saw God sitting on his throne. And I saw the host of heaven standing around him. And we know that the word of God has pronounced cursings upon this man from the way he has done. You can't bless what God has cursed. Neither can the devil curse what God has blessed. It's an individual affair, no matter how poor, how stupid, how unlearned, how uneducated. What God blessed is blessed. What God has cursed is cursed. No more to differentiate what is right and what is wrong. Micah knew good and well that that wasn't the Lord that was with them preachers. Well, what was the matter with those preachers? Notice what they've been. They've been dressed the best. They've been fed the best. 
Catholic. There's a lot of Protestant does that. What they try to do is substitutionary something. They try to adopt some new claim. They try to adopt education to take the place of the Holy Ghost. You'll never be able to do it. No matter how well your man is educated, I think it's a good thing for him to be educated. But if he hasn't got the Holy Spirit with that, his education will do him no good. Education will never take the place of the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Notice that instead of this, they have tried to adopt handshaking for the old time experience we used to have. Today, the church has become modern. They walk up and give the right hand of fellowship. And that's about the way they do it. But it'll never take the place of the old fashioned mourner's bench where sinners called out and got right with God. That's right. Today, they're trying to take the place of God's tithing. They're trying to adopt something. They're trying to make it different. They go down and have bunco games in the churches. Play lottery. Lottery will never take the place of God's tithing. Suffering. Blanket selling. Picnic. To raise money. To pay different debts off. It'll never take the place of God's eternal tithe and offering. It'll never do it. But yet we're trying to do it. What is it? It's enticing spirit coming down trying to sub- substitute something for the Word of God. God has no substitute for His Word. It's eternal and forever. God has nothing to substitute faith. Faith has no substitute. Hope will never take the place of faith. Faith is alone. stands alone. It will never take the Hope can never take its place. Hope is the substance the things hope for, the evidence of things not seen, or faith is rather. See? Hope's one thing, faith is another. Hope hopes for it, faith has got it. One's intellectual faith, the other's direct revelation of God. It will never take its place. We're trying, but we're making all these substitutes. We're trying to build great churches and instead of send missionaries, another substitute. Jesus never ordained anybody to build a church. It never was ordained in the Bible. We put up seminaries. They let that take the place of missionaries. We, Jesus never did tell us to build a seminary. They're all right. Education. Trying to get that to take the place. It'll never do it. Jesus' commission was to go into all the world and Amen. preach the gospel to every creature Amen. for the end time. So all the substitutionaries we have will never take the place of the genuine. Amen. The other day I had an experience, a substitutionary. I had my first tooth in. I had to pull a tooth out. This morning I got a false tooth sticking in there. I can't hardly talk. It will never take the place of the real one. No, sir. Oh, my. You might take a man and dress him up, make him out of wood, chalk, whatever you want to, and fix him up ever so much. He has no feelings, no conscience. He'll never take the place of any real man. Neither will a bogus conversion that walks up and says, I joined the church, I try to do better. It'll never take the place of the genuine, old-fashioned, God-set, Holy Ghost conversion that makes a man different in his heart. He can't do it. Because there's no life in it. There's nothing to give him life. You're not long ago, I've seen the great artist that has brought this sculpture, I mean, has made this picture of Moses. Can't call his name now, he's a Greek artist. Cost him his life. And when he got it so, or he thought it so perfect, he becomes so thrilled at the image of Moses. So he struck the knee of it and said, Speak, Moses! It looks so real. It was so patterned, so perfect, until it looked so much like Moses to his thought that he struck with a hammer to make it have feelings. Puts in the mind of the church. No matter how much you substitute, how big your congregation you get, how well you sing your songs, how good your congregation dresses, how much you got this, that, or the other, you can strike, seed or whatever. 
delivered. It's let on the bars on all the old fashioned Holy Ghost teachings. It permitted the man to have social parties with one another out into the basement where they would play games. That'll never help to substitute the upper room where they were praying for the Holy Ghost. It permitted women to come together and tell jokes and say and have a lot of Tommy Rock that there's nothing to. That'll never take the place of a prayer meeting. Women, the way they go out and dress today, it's, oh, it's a disgrace. I heard a remark that Brother Neville made to the poor American people that they have sent all their clothes overseas. That's right. They're walking around in their underclothes. They, that's right. They must have given to the missionaries because the missionary, the people and the heathens in the other countries wear them. These people do without them. Look like they like it. I tell you, that something has been perverted. That's the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's demons that strip your clothes. There never was but one person in the Bible that ever tore their clothes off of, and that was a man that was demon possessed. And he comes in a mild form today, like he's social, like he's good. Like it's all right. It's cooler weather. And uh, it'll make you cooler if you take off your clothes. Man walking up and down the yards and half naked and women likewise. Why you have skin so there's no more respect than there was for dogs, one for another. What's the matter? I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm only trying to tell you it's demon possession. And you're listening to enticing spirits that's telling you that's all right, but it's a lie. A grain of wheat will only produce wheat. If you're a Christian, you won't do that. You can't do it. You just can't do it. You've got an intellectual faith and say, Brother Brandon, I believe the Bible. Your life tells that you don't. Amen. Enticing spirits first in the Word of God. He knew where he was standing, Micah did. He had the Word of God. He was a very unpopular man. Nobody liked him. Because he told the truth. So they like these preachers. Now, another thing that has taken place. I believe and think that any man that's got an experience with God or a woman is bound to get a little emotional. I just believe it. That's right. But you know what? They've adopted emotionalism for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They just get a lot of noise and there's nothing in it. You live just as holy as you live noisy. Then you'll be all right. Amen. Amen. Emotions is certainly all right. Body exercise, talk a little. But enticing spirits has got over into the holiness group of people. And they've got them to just resting upon because they can shout or because they can dance, because they can make emotions. That old fellow down there, the chief of all them prophets, the preachers, he was so sure that he was right. So he made himself a pair of horns and danced all around and made a big commotion. He was going to push the other Assyrian army out of the country. But it was a lie. God's word is set different. Amen. Amen. See, you can be emotional right if you've got the right kind of emotion behind it. The right kind of emotion moving your emotion. David danced before the Lord and his wife laughed at him. And God looked down at heaven and said, David, you're a man after my own heart. But his motives is right. His life is right behind it. So just because we can be emotional don't mean that we're saved. Because we go to church don't mean we're saved. Don't believe those enticing spirits. A real spirit of God, a real word of God is the truth of God, which is the seed of God will produce God in your life. Be godly, saintly, holy. Amongst a lot of people we find where emotions and so forth, there become stabbings and backbitings and all kind of ungodly things. Rather, that's sulfuric acid in the church. It's demon power. Spirit of men and women who get among one another and try to push off and say, this is not right and this is not right and that's not right. If you'll chase it down nine times out of ten, it's the very person making this turn it's not right. Man. God hates discord among brothers. Be reverent. Be holy. Love God. Stand by. And as long as you know your life is giving up for the Bible with purity of heart, purity of thought, love towards your brothers, trying your best to build the kingdom of God and doing those things, dressing right, living right, talking right, going right places, then you can have all emotions you want to and everybody 
lightning spirits going forth. Demons under disguises. Look, we're in the last days. We're in the end time. The world is just about ready to come to its head. Like a store boil somewhere. That's going to explode one of these days and the core jumps out of it. It's become filthy. There's no staff can heal it. They've rejected the, the serum. They've rejected the treatment. You take a boil arising there, and if you don't take penicillin or something to knock it out or something or another, it'll just keep rising till it'll burst. And that's what the world does. It started not long ago to let them down. They got off on great big ideas. False spirits come in and begin to tell people this, that, the other. We broke up into 900 and something different denominations. Everyone had a different view. They say, we believe this, period. That's all we believe. They can't let the Holy Spirit come in. They can't have the right away. God got a bunch of people that could shout. Then everybody had to shout. They got some to speak with tongues. Then everybody had to speak with tongues. They got all I guess to become what? Absolutely contaminated. With enticing spirits, enticing people to do these emotions when there's no God in it at all. Then they go out and live any kind of life they desire to live. And then call it Christian. And the world sits and looks on and says, Well, look at there. I'm as good as they are. Like I said the night about the hall, about the sinner. You can't blame a sinner's a sinner. Don't try to reform him, don't try to tell him this, that, or the other. He's a sinner to begin with. Amen. He's a pig to begin with. Amen. He don't know no difference. If he goes to the movies and he goes on Sunday and he goes to ball games and he uh, does all these things, he's a sinner to begin with. Amen. His nature's like a hog. No hog stick his old down manure pile and eat all the grains out of it and everything. Well, that's he's a hog. You can't blame him. He's a hog. Amen. That's why we're sinners. But when you go and call yourself a Christian and stick your nose in with him, then you're no better than he is. Yeah. But you're worse. Come out from among it. Let go of the world. Yeah. Let go. Let God. Yeah. Let go. How do you let go? So many people are wondering today. They say, well, Brother Branham, how do you let go? I know you heard a lot of theology on it. Let go. A lot of people just work up a sweat trying to let go. Many people come around and say, I've got to go on a 40-day fast so I can do something. You don't need a 40-day fast. You need to let go of the world and all these devilish things and take God's word in your heart. You've got to be taught how to do that. You don't do it by jumping up and down. Neither do you do it on a 40-day fast. You do it by a surrendered heart to Almighty God. Like a little baby. I noticed my little baby back there, his mother trying to put his little jacket on him this morning. He wanted to get his little arm in the sleeve. He couldn't put his arm in there. He don't know how. You've got to guide his little arm. He wants to get his arm in there, but he's just beating all around it. He never gets to the sleeve. He knows he's not in the sleeve. And so do you know that you're not right with God. When you're still backbiting, lying, doing everything. You can't be right with God. I don't care how many churches you belong to until your soul becomes converted. Brother, that's old passion, but that'll boil down and put soup in your soul. Right? How to put his arm in. He's got to have someone to direct him in. How to put his arm in. Then when he gets his arm in his little jacket, he knows he's all right. That's the way it is that they were born again Christians. When he really gets into God, he watches his life with God's word, and he realizes he's lined up with every bit of it. He's got long suffering, gentleness, quietness, meekness, power, pain, love, joy, peace. He ain't bossed about like a troubled seas. He ain't worried about every little thing. He ain't jumping here and there like a bottle stopper on a windy ocean. He's set. His heart's pure. His thoughts are pure. His intentions are pure. His alternative is right. And he knows he lines up with the Word of God. All hell can't move him. He's lying with the Word of God. He's got divine love, pure in his heart. For every man and woman. He's got his abstained from the things of the world. They're dead to him. He don't want them no more. Amen. Well, you couldn't make a Holy Ghost girl put on a pair of them ungodly looking clothes and get out there for nothing. Amen. Now, there's no need to go and tell her she's wrong. Of course, she won't believe you. Because that's all she knows. That's her joy. The woman puts on those little things to get out of the evening. Yes, when the man comes home, the government is to mow the yard so and tell me.
me that's right. Woman, I don't mean to say you're, you're evil. I don't mean to say you're immoral. But you don't realize, sister, that an unclean spirit has got a hold of you. What would you do it for? You've got sense enough to know that it's not cooler. It's hotter. There's an unclean spirit. You say, me, me, I went to church. Nebuchadnezzar was a great man. But because he got haughty, God gave him the spirit of an ox. And let him eat grass for seven years. And his fingernails throw it out like some of these women do around here. That's right. And he got demon possessed. A man got demon possessed and stripped his clothes off. He couldn't put clothes on him. Do you see what I mean? It's enticing spirits. Your church puts up with it. Your preacher's afraid to say anything. They're afraid that you won't pay in your tithes anymore. That's the reason. That's the trouble. My goodness, how are you going to preach to a bunch of buzzers that you get them converted and right with God to begin with? The roots are known as dead stuff all the time, watching these are jumping out in an old fashioned revival, sweep from coast to coast to get men and women right with God. Let loose the things of the world. Let loose the petty talk, kettle preaching. Amen. Amen. Preach the gospel. God said so. If you love the world, the things of the world, the love of God, not even in you. People can jump up and down and shout all night long and speak in tongues like poor peas on a dry cowhide. Walk right out the next morning with enough timber to fight a buzz off. Go right on out and tell something in the church that will cause the whole church to be broke up. It's nothing in the world but enticing demon spirits. You want to come back to the word for God is pure, he's holy. Amen. Amen. Right. Enticing spirits. Bursting the word of God. Here's a man not long ago, got a little woman. Catholic got a devil over there. In a time of her menopause, it comes out in her hands and her forehead. If a good Holy Ghost preacher I thought. That man had a bottle of that stuff out of her hand going around anointing people with it. Mercy is Antichrist. I don't care if blood comes from her nose or from her head or where. Brother, there's no blood will take the place of Jesus Christ. That's the only blood I know anything about. She might have oil pouring out of one hand and wine out of the other, but it's just you using it any form of religion. It's the devil. See how preachers will fall for such stuff as that. What we need to come back to the guidebook. Back to the Word of God. This is the Word of God. The blessed old Bible. Say, well, I'm afraid to become that, Brother Branham. I'm afraid that I'll lose some of my joy. What's the matter? You don't know what joy is. Amen. I said, I don't condemn the drunkards for going out and getting drunk. He's all moody. He don't know. He's just up in the morning. He's got the blues, the hangover. Goes out and gets him two or three bottles of beer. Goes out and gets him some whiskey and all that kind of stuff. The little cigarette sucker sits back and smoke and blow it through his nose like it was a freight train. That's all. I, I don't blame him. That's all the joy he knows. That's all he knows about. He's a pig by nature. Shame on you. Who profess to be a Christian and rely on such things for joy. Amen. When the Holy Ghost gospel is in the one great big powerhouse of joy. Amen. The Holy Ghost gospel is a perfect intoxication. Amen. For every man that's got the blues, you take a drink of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You're Amen. drunk until you leave this world. Amen. Amen. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's a constant stimulation. It's a constant intoxication. Amen. Drunk day and night. Amen. Amen. That's the word of God. The church comes around, adopts other things. They have to have a little party where they all go out on the beach to have recreation. A card party. You get together for fellowship. That's right. Have a dance. Sometime at one of the members' house. Sometimes in the church basement. A dance. Adopted. Trying to get something to satisfy. What's the matter with the people at the beach anyhow? They're big, stupid, 
begin with. If it ever come in contact with Christ, it has so much joy. Don't think it would be deader than midnight to him. Gospel. Drunk on the Spirit. Joy unspeakable is going to glory. Don't condemn the sinner. Have mercy on him. Let him go ahead and smoke his pipe. Let him drink his liquor. Let him have his card party. That's his pleasure. Don't blame him. Coming home and everything tired and worn out. He wants the pleasure. But the thing for you to do is live such a godly life that you can prove to him that the gospel holds 10,000 times more than that place. And if he dies in that state, he'll go to hell on his liquor. That's the devil's intoxication. If he dies dragging on that old pipe, God be judged. If he dies going out here dancing and running out with him all clothes on, God be judged. But there's one thing. If you die under the anointing power of the Holy Ghost, like Stephen did when he looked up in the face of God, said, I see heavens open, and Jesus sitting at the right hand. You're a heaven down like a Martin to its box. Amen. I see spirit bursting the word of God. Let loose. Let go. How you do it, Brother Brandon? Just let go. That's all you have to do. Take God's word. Don't try to work up nothing. Don't get out there already beating on her. Lord, give me the Holy Ghost. Lord, give me the Holy Ghost. He ain't coming you beating on that order. That don't do no good. No. That only way it comes is taking him at his word. Look at Peter. Peter was in a trouble. Looks like he's going to die. And he seen the Lord come on walking on the water. And he said, Lord, if that be you, bid me come. Lord said, come on. Now Peter said, now wait a minute, Lord. Let me go on a 40-day fast <laughs> to see if I can walk on that water or not. Oh, Lord, let me get enough spirit on me that I can dance in the spirit and speak in tongues in this boat. Then I can step out. No, sir. He took God at his word. Let loose and let go. Yeah. God took him through. Why does God met Moses? And he said, Moses, go down there. And do the Egypt and tell the Pharaoh, let my people go. Why did Moses say, let me go on a 40-day fast first and see if I got faith enough to obey you, God? Give me some, some other Lord, let me tell you something. Let me see if I get the Spirit first. Moses never asked no questions. He just took God at his word and took off. Amen. That's where you have to do it. Take God at his word. Then you know you'll be able to do it. Amen. He didn't wait for something else taking place. He just went ahead and done it. What about Elijah? When he come down off the mount, Carmel. Been up there for a long time. And he met a poor word of woman. She was a she was an alien, a Gentile. And when he met her down there, she was picking up some sticks in the yard. And God told him to go down to that widow's house. What a place for the preacher to go. There he was down to the widow's house. And what she did, she had two sticks. So what are you doing? She said, picking up some sticks. I got just enough meal to make a couple of corn cakes. That's all I got left is three years since we had any rain. It said that I'm going to make these corn cakes and me and my boys go to eat them and die. He said, make me one first. Hallelujah. Oh, I know I'm a little bit crazy, but I'm on the Lord's side anyhow. He said, make me one first. For thus saith the Lord. There you are. What is it? Seek ye. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not the kingdom of God in a little noise. Not the kingdom of God in a little motion. Not the kingdom of God in a little this or that. But God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be added to you. But first, now, that we'd have heard that. Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word. She said, that's the word of the Lord, for that's a holy man of God. That's God's prophet. And I know it's the truth, and that's the word of God. Now, she didn't run across to ask the neighbors how to do it. She didn't want to go to share her to tell her neighbors, say, what do you think? The preacher's over my house saying this. God, excuse me, what do you think about this? She wanted him to get a jump out. <laughs> she let go. She let go of what she had, that she might get more. That's what the world needs today is a good old fashioned letting go of what she got. Hallelujah. She jumped out so she could just feel up. She 
you don't throw the oil you had and all the oil you had and all the meal you had to the preacher, to the kingdom of God. And when you dumped it all in there, God come down, filled up the meal bag, filled up the oil jug. He dumped it again in the preacher's place and come down, fill it up again. He dumped it in there every time he sees it dumped, he filled it. I'll say today a man will dump out all this nonsense of carrying all this impersonating Christianity and let the Holy Ghost take its place. There will be a revival so they can treat that and treat the Holy Ghost. Quit the nonsense. Get back to the Word of God. Dump out. You might fill up. You let go and God will let come. You dump out, God will fill in. All the petty things that you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you ought to do this, you ought to do that. Forget it. Dump it out of your soul. Say, God, let me from this holy, this day be holy thine. Lord, I come with a broken heart. I come with a contrite spirit. I love you. And you know I love you. And I want to forget all this foolishness of all these 40 day fasts and see if I can get closer to God and all this, that, the other. All this nonsense. Stop it! There's nothing in the world tells you to have a 40 day fast. Not a thing. Nothing in the world tells you to fast unless God would tell you. And if you fast, you ain't going to get hungry and go all these things as you're fasting, brother. You'll be joy and happy all the time. So don't appear before men like hypocrites do with a long, sad face. I'm on a 40 day fast. My plate won't fit me anymore. I've lost 30 pounds of. They told me I'd look better after this was over. Oh, nonsense is enticing spirits of the devil. Get up the altar, say glory, glory, glory. You can't hardly say anything else and say you got to speak in tongues before you get the Holy Ghost. Nonsense. Dump it out. Get that out of your system and come on the Word of God. He said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. God don't keep His Word. He's not God. Amen. Get filled up. Amen. I love that. That's his word. God said so. That's right. And when God said it, I'll take care of it. All right. All the preparations you make, all the going to church you do, it's just like down here at the car works where they build a big bunch of freight or a big bunch of passenger cars. I used to work there. And they're taking build those big coaches and everything and put a hardwood and laid mahogany all around and everything so beautiful. Set out there on a track and it was as dead as a doornail. There set the engine, no steam in it. She just sat there. What it needs today is some fire and a bar. What it needs today is some steam. What it needs today, the church, to boil the hottest boiling thing there is to boil sin out of your life is love. And if you can't love one another, how are you going to love God who you haven't seen? Love hides them all to the sin. Get in love with God. Then you'll love one another. Then you'll love the church. You'll love the cause. You'll love everything. It's godly. And you'll keep waiting the things of the world. It's icing spirits going around. Telling people this, that, or the other. They've got to do this. They've got to do that. It's because that denominations has raised up. And they've got a little revelation. That they say, well, now, I believe that a man... I believe such a thing as shouting in the Bible. That's right. That's the truth. They made a denomination out of it. When you shout, you got it. But you haven't. Next to raise up, said, speaking in tongues. That's right. That's for the Bible. Well, when you speak in tongues, you got it. But a lot of them spoke in tongues and didn't have it. See? That's not it. No, sir. A lot of them said, well, we got this. Prophesying. Look at these prophets here with horns on their heads, jumping up and down and prophesying. What Micah said, you're ever one line. Amen. Right. God don't come like that. God comes to a sincere heart that comes with a contrite, broken spirit. He that goes forth, pulling his tears, will doubtless return again, rejoicing, bringing with him precious seed. Amen. Get that right, friends. So much demonology. Demons working in human souls. Watch where it bears its fruit. Watch what kind of a life a person lives. See the way they're acting. Watch the way they do. See what their motives is. It's just as impossible. And if I told you that the only way here is just a car, all lined up here, heaven is in Charleston. You can't walk. The only way you can go is a car. And every man that crosses the line must bring in five gallons of gasoline. Here's his car, but if you don't have gasoline, you can't run it. Well, that's exactly, perfectly the way it is in heaven. If you die without God, I don't care how.
how you live and how many cars you built, if the love of God isn't there to pull you into the kingdom of God, you're lost. It's a negative and positive. No matter how much positive this current runs here, if it hasn't got a ground water, it'll never last. That's right. You've got to be rooted, grounded in the love of God. Oh, brother, bring that negative and positive together. You'll have a life, the good old passionate gospel life. Amen. Spread from shore to shore. You'll never have it. I don't matter how much kicking and jumping you can do with the positive. You've got to have a ground wire to flash the light. Amen. Amen. You ever notice you set a ground wire here on this? It ever bit goes from back down here to the substation, right down to the ground. And every time a man gets rooted and grounded in God's Word, it roots and grounds in his Calvary, not a worthy anchor, the solid host of God was brought there to face the light of the gospel. Amen. 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 You know what's the matter? People in these great big coal farm of Mars, out here pretending to be preaching the gospel. A little preacher come to me yesterday, he belongs to one of the greatest denominations there is in the land today outside of Catholic. He said, Brother Pam, I'm sick and tired. He said, they're going to make all those preachers put old robes and turn their collars around and, and preach certain things tonight. They'll tell us what to preach on each quarter. He said, I can't stand it no longer. Amen. He said, what must I do? Must I start preaching the gospel? I said, Brother, as long as you're with that denomination, respect it. He said, just what you are, but walk up to your presbyter or your state superintendent and say, Sir, I've been born again of the Spirit of God. Here's the Word of God. If you'll let me preach that, I'll stay in the church. If you don't, I'm gone. Turn it over to somebody else. Uh, that's the way to do it. Don't beat around the bush. Don't be nagging. Come out and say what it is. Uh, right. He said, Brother Brandon, you think I have a congregation? I said, where the carcasses, the eagles will be gathered. Right. They'll follow like the man was that had set the chickens down. It's not a joke. I don't mean it for a joke. I mean it for a point. He's going to set his chicken and he didn't have enough eggs. He put a duck egg under one. And when they all hatched out, the duck was the funniest looking thing the chickens ever saw. So the hen would come to the chickens and the little chicks would come, but the duck didn't know that language. But one day the old hen let him out behind the barn. There was a creek down behind the barn. When that little duck smelt that water, he took out to the water as hard as he could go. The old hen said, cluck, 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 and the little duck said, honk, honk, honk. He was headed for the water. Why? He was a duck by nature. When he smelt water, brother, he couldn't keep away from it, for he was a duck. And I say today, any people that's really wanting to find God, they won't let no church dictate to them and say that they can't live that or other. If you've got the nature of God in you, you'll go to holiness, you'll go to the right thing, you'll think for the right thing, you'll do the right thing, you'll think the right thing, you'll live the right thing. If you're a duck, you like water. If you're a Christian, you like Christ. If you're a devil, you like the things of the devil. If you're a buzzard, you eat dead things. If you're a pig, you root manure. Amen. What are you at today? Right. You claim it to be up here eating the things of the Lord. They go down and root with the devil. There's something wrong with it. Amen. Quit listening to them spirits. They're devils. No matter if you have to stand alone. Men and women that's ever married anything, there has been many women who stood alone with God. Look at Micah, how he stood there like, not the rock of Gibraltar, but the rock of ages. He said, I'll not speak nothing. I don't care what the seminary says. I don't care what my congregation says. I don't care what the king says. If they cut my head off, I'll only say what God puts in my mouth to say. He was right. He was right. Today, men and women don't pay attention to what the world's got for you. What is treatment it's got? What kind of a bacterial inoculation they have and claim? If you join the church, you'll be all right. That's a false inoculation. Why wow, you still got the disease of sin? That's right. God tell you one thing, brother, that will inoculate you from sin. That's come through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And that will inoculate you from all sin and your desires will be heaven bound. And you won't have no time for the things of the world. Now we pray, our Heavenly Father, when we see these enticing spirits upon people and knowing that they are despising the things of God, I pray, God, that you'll get a hold of every man and woman in here today. Let this be a day, Lord, that they'll realize 
that their life doesn't tally up with the Word, and they've been listening to the wrong thing, that the devil's been soothing them down with old True Story magazines, old rotten commie right of the world, and old moving picture shows and unclean television, oh God, such impossible thing for a Christian to look at. God, it makes you sick. You said it made you sick like violence. You said a dog goes to its vomit and a, and a hog goes to its water. An old dog will vomit up something. See an old half-born, supposed to be hypocritical person come to the altar and like you're going to vomit up the world. If you don't keep your eye on them, they come right back and eat the thing again. Oh, God, clean your out, Lord. Hallelujah. Send the Holy Ghost with such old time conviction. That will clean a man's appetite and clean his soul and clean him up and make him a heaven-bound creature. Give him renew his youth and his bowels like the eagle, that he might mount up and surpass the things of this world and soar in the heaven down to earth. He can see the troubles coming in the distance. Grant it, Lord, you liken your prophets to them. The eagle that had the eye of the eagle could go way high and see things a long time before it got there. Oh, God bless this little church. Bless these people that come here. Bless the strangers in the gates today. And let them know that this message was not directed to no personal uh, being, but directed especially, Lord, to those who are deeply in need. Knowing that someday we must stand together in the judgment of God. And knowing that we'll be held responsible for knowing the truth and not saying it. Father, I pray that it will be taken upon every heart in Jesus' name. With our heads bowed just a moment. I wonder if there's someone here this morning who would say, Brother Branham, I'm sick and tired of these little things. I got petty things that hung on me so long. I, I'm always talking out of term. I'm, I'm doing things I shouldn't do. And I know it's not becoming to a Christian. I don't want to do that. God knows I don't. And I don't want to listen to that old spirit anymore. It's the thing that's kept me down all my life from having real love and freedom in Christ. I want you to pray for me, Brother Bram, and it'll, it'll leave me this day. Will you raise your hand? Never head to bow. God bless you. Oh, my dozens of hands. Little old petty things. Little old things that make you talk or start some kind of a little fussing in the church. Make you take sides with something other like that. Oh, that's ungodly. That's discord among the brothers. And don't do that. You don't want that. You don't want that. And little old things, little old tempers and everything else that keep you down. Say, God, I don't want that thing no more. I'm sick and tired of it. I'm ready today to discard it. I'm coming now, Lord, and I want to get away from all my selfishness. If my brother doesn't treat me right, I'll pray for him anyhow. If my daddy doesn't treat me right, I love him anyhow. If my wife doesn't treat me right or my husband, I go about humble before God. Lord, I look only to your kingdom. I want my mind straight. I want my heart full of joy. I want to go about when trouble is really buzzing around me. I still want to stay with my hands up and my heart pure before you, Lord, knowing this is someday I'll meet you. I want that kind of experience. Lord, make me that from this day. Would you raise your hand? Somebody that didn't raise your hand a while ago, God bless you. God bless you. Sister, give us a little card while we have our heads bound. How much do you really mean it? Don't play now. This is not a playing time. This is a receiving time. This is the time that you must get it. Come dump it out right now, will you? Come give all you got to God. Say, God, I ain't got very much. I'm this little housewife. I can't do very much, Lord, but I, I can read the Bible. I can pray every day. I can throw out all the trash that's in my mind. I can throw all that stuff out. I'm guilty of a lot of things that preacher said this morning. So I, I'm dumping out today. I don't want it. God, fill me with love. Fill me with the thing that makes me love the bitterest enemy I got. I really want it, Lord. While we she's playing here, won't you come now and stand the altar just a moment while we gather with a word of prayer? If you really mean that now, if you're really ready to forsake it, you'll never leave this altar today with that on your heart if you'll come sincere and say, I'm coming up here just to stand just a minute, Brother Brandon. Therefore, you have a word of prayer with me personally. I, I want you to come pray. Will you come now? With your head back, who will rise and come to the altar? Stand around the altar. Pass me not to
Somebody comes up and goes speaking about somebody else, you join right in with them and all oh, just run them down. That's wrong, brother. Don't do that. That'll finally keep you out of the promised land. If you just got a little old things that you ought to have, if the love of God really is in your heart, won't you be lady and man? Walk up and say, God, right here, I'm going to jump it out this morning, right here. I'm going to wait this altar, a different person. Would you come? Is there a sinner that has never accepted Jesus? You know you're a sinner. You don't know him as your Savior. You say, Brother Brandon, yes, I thought I had a lot of pleasure. I go to dances and parties and all those things. I watch the wrong kind of shows and I, I read the wrong kind of literature. I read old books that's got vulgar stories in it. I kind of enjoy reading it. Brother, there's something wrong with you. That's your appetite. See? You let me see what a man reads. Let me see what he watches. Listen to the music he listens at. The other day, coming along in a car, a certain person reached over and turned on my radio, some kind of old vulgar music. I said, turn that thing off. I don't want to hear that. Some old woogie woogie stuff. I said, well, I like to hear that. I said, your nature's wrong. You're wrong. And I was out here a few days after that, up on the mountainside or hillside fishing with the person. Them little birds is the same. The larks and the horns. The old Martin Gale flying up in the air, Nightingale, singing the praises. I heard that for us and the boy. That's my music. Keep that turned on. That's my radio. God sends him down and sings to me out here. It soothes my soul. Better than all the old crazy stuff, these old jukeboxes are roaring and going over. He can't even eat in a public place. It's a devil's diet. It's a devil's house. All messed up with sin. All y'all gonged up out there and enjoy that. When they put that money in them little boxes and all that old dirty stuff, come on. You enjoy that shame on you. You're a backslider. You're away from God. You don't know God. If you know God and forgiveness of your sins, you'd never listen to such nonsense as that. It'd be dead to you. You'd, you'd vomit from it. You don't want it. Your diet's better. You love God. Won't you come this morning, kneel down here with these confessors this morning? Here's many women kneeling right here. Been Christian for years. I'm not unchristianizing them, but what I'm trying to do is tell them that devil that's haunting them is keeping them out of the full joy. The Holy Ghost is joy. When I wake up drunk, I go to bed drunk. I'm drunk all day long, drunk all night long. Well, I just, I just love. I go fishing. I'm just. Pass me my old town, take you here, my home will cry. I go hunting and singing the praises of God. I'm preaching. I every world go. Don't you want to be that way? Full of the Holy Ghost. It's stimulation. Oh, my. You're singing more dirty songs. You can sing it. I am bound for the promised land. I am bound for the promised land. Five hundred of us standing under when I was baptizing, a hundred and twenty. 
about this time of year down on the banks of the river, when that great morning star comes shining down on the river. Hallelujah! A voice speaking from it says, Someday! Let the gospel throughout the world. How could a poor little injured corn boy ever do that? With the grace of God. Amen. Amen. Oh, who will come and go? Get rid of all side of the weight now. Don't listen to those enticing spirits. Come listen to the word of God. Bless the of the Lord. Bless the Lord. They've been hungry and thirsty for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let's bow our heads now while we're praying with these at the altar. Your children, I want you to remember this morning you're there to lay aside the weight. Amen. You're there to lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily besets you. Paul said in Hebrews the twelfth chapter, seeing that we are compassed about but such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that's easily beset and what shall I more say? For time would not tell of Gideon, of Balak, of Barak, of Samson, of Job, of David, of Samuel, and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdom, lost righteousness, obtained promise, stopped the mouth of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness is made strong, and whacked the violent the enemy in flight, and women received their dead, raised to life, and others received torment, cruel marks, scourges, gay over, more in this bonds and imprisonment, and and others who had trials, mocking, scourging. They all obtained a good report through faith. And all these had obtained a good report through faith. Receive not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that without us they might not be made perfect. Wherefore, see, we are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that's easily beset us, that we might run with patience the race that's set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and set out at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus in his prayers says, Father, I sanctify myself. Jesus becomes sanctified to the church. He could have got married, but he didn't do it. He becomes sanctified. He says, sanctify them, Father, through the truth. Thy word is the truth. Now let's lay aside every weight. You got a temper? You got something about you that makes you talk when you ought not to talk? Oh, God, lay it there now. Lay it there. Watch the fire of the altar come down and take it away. Watch the love of God lick it up. Amen. Watch all that old selfishness, the way you've been talking to your wife, the way you've been talking to your husband, the way you've been talking to your neighbor, the way you've talked about the people in the church. Lay it on the altar this morning, and the fire of God will come down and take it right away, and divine love will burn in this place. He got sickness laid on the altar. Say, Lord, here it is. Create in me a clean spirit. Create in me a healing power. See what God will do. God will do it this morning. Our Heavenly Father, we bow in your presence in behalf of those at the altar. Let thy grace rest upon each one of them, Father. Now, as they, Lord, I can't do it for them. They've got to do it themselves. No man can do it for them. They have to do it alone. Let their souls now say in their selves, Oh, God, this temper, I'll lay it down here, Lord. I'll never pick it up. No matter what comes or go, I'll let it go from now on. This tongue of mine has been easy to take sides with a bunch of gossip. Lord, I'm laying it down here. I'll never pick it up again. Sanctify my tongue, Lord. Let me feel the angels coming through like Isaiah did. When he said, I'm of unclean lips, woe is me. 
And the angel comes up the tongs and went to the altar and got the coals of fire and laid on his lips and sanctified him. God sanctify every talker this morning that talks wrong and sows this card. Grant it, Lord. All the diseases that's found here in this building, disease people, knowing that they're devils too. God is your servant, I rebuke them in Jesus' name. May they come out of every sick person. And may every unclean person that's got unclean thoughts, vulgar, lust, men and women alike, God take it out of them. All these here trying to get rid of cigarettes and little social drinks and little parties and selfish things. God stimulate their heart with the Holy Ghost in such a way that those things don't have any desire no more. They'll have no room. You're so full of the Holy Ghost. From now on, God make this little church a burning bush. Make it a Holy Ghost place. Make it a burning fire that the world might turn aside to see the glory of God. God start with this little handful of people of a couple of hundred here this morning. Bring it, Lord. Purify every heart, every Methodist, every Baptist, every Catholic, every Presbyterian, every Pentecostal. Lord, take it out of their heart and let them come to you today. Dennis Potter, I command them to you and commit them to you in Jesus Christ's name for the cleansing of their souls and the healing of their bodies. Amen. I wonder at the altar, have you left your burden? Do you feel like it's laying there? Did you feel it's laying there? You be the judge. You're the one that's praying. I've done the preaching, you're doing the praying. Is your burden left there, brother, sister? Can you really leave it there? If you can, raise your hand and say, yes, God. Now I'll leave it here. My difference, I'll leave it here at the altar. What about it down in the altar here to my right, ladies? Can you leave it there? Can you leave that old bird and lay there and say, Yes, my faith looked up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, while we all sing it together now.
got a father, oh, we wonder. I've got a father, oh, we wonder. On the other shore, oh, some bright day I'll go and see. Some bright day I'll go and see. Some bright day I'll go and see. That bright day may be tomorrow. That bright day may be tomorrow. That bright day may be tomorrow. On the other shore. I want to know how many's got a father in the other land. Let's see your hands. How many's got a mother in the other land? Let's see your hands. How many's got a savior in the other land? Let's see your hands. Oh, won't that be a happy me? Won't that be a happy me? Won't that be a happy me? Oh, I want you to do something. Now, while we sing that again, I want you to shake hands with somebody standing by you and say, Brother, sister, pray for me, and I'll meet you in the other land. Don't do it like you mean it. How many wants to meet one another? How many wants to meet everybody here over there? We sure we do. Now, let's just shake one another's hands and say, I want to meet you, brother. I want to meet you on the other side. Now, while we sing this, uh, I've got a Savior over yonder. All right? I've got a Savior. I've got a Savior over yonder. Make you feel good? That's fine.
holy now. Just bow our heads and in our own lovely way. Let's just praise Him with our hands up. Say thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Bring sweet deliverance. Bring free salvation. Thank you, Lord. We give you this thank offering. We praise you because you're so lovely. You're the Lord of the valley, the morning star, the Lord of the sun, the all oh, You're the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. He that loves, which is and shall come. The great Alpha Omega. You're the wonderful one, the Prince of Peace, the root and offspring of David. You're all, and we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. We thank you for your word, for it is a light unto our path. Oh, we pray, Lord, that you let us walk in the light. Grant it, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. All right, while we be seated a minute, we're walking We walk in the light, such a beautiful light, come But he 
died like a man. Then came the Lord Jesus. They crucified him. He preached that the spirit would save men from sin. There's Peter and Paul and John the divine. They gave up their lives so this gospel could shine. They mingle their blood like the prophets of old, so the true word of God could honestly be told. Then they stoned Stephen, he preached against sin, he made them so angry, they dashed his head in. But he died in the spirit, he gave up the ghost, and went to join the others that life giving hope. It keeps dripping with blood, yes, it's dripping with blood, this holy ghost God, but it's dripping with blood, the blood of his side. Listen, there's souls under the altar, it's time to come for the Lord to punish those who've done wrong, but there's going to be more who will give their life blood for this Holy Ghost gospel with its crimson blood. Just keep dripping with blood. Hallelujah! Keep dripping with blood. I like to go right to the pulpit. Amen. <laughs> oh, how wonderful. My brethren, to give their life blood, there's going to be more. We'll do the same thing. Don't worry. It's coming down to a showdown pretty soon. You'll either go in or go out. They're all affiliating down the council of churches and all going in. They're all conglomerating together. And there's going to be more who will give their life blood. For this Holy Ghost gospel and its cleansing blood, it's dripping with blood. Yes, it's dripping. Oh, hallelujah! This Holy Ghost gospel, it's dripping with blood. The blood of this gospel. like the rapture is just above the church. <laughs> oh, this makes you feel so good. All sins are in the blood. See, the Holy Spirit likes the Word. The Word, what the Holy Spirit feeds on, you see. Oh, now I come down and get among the people. Cleanses their sins. Takes away their sickness. Takes their blues away. Now I'm drunk. <laughs> just drunk as I can be. Drunk on the spirit. Love falling out of my heart. No matter what anybody has ever done, it's forgiven. I the bitter's enemy, it's all over. Anybody's ever talked or said anything about oh, I, I wish it's all gone. All clean now. And it's dripping with blood. Oh, I don't want 
wonderful time for you. What a wonderful time for me. If we all prepare to meet Jesus our King, what a wonderful time will be. Oh, a wonderful time for you. A wonderful time for me. If we all prepare to meet Jesus our King, what a wonderful time will be. Everybody, come on! Oh, wonderful time for you. A wonderful time for me. As we all prepare to see the spark, what a wonderful time. I just feel like an old fashioned revival is in a church, don't you? Just an old cleansing up, scouring out. Good old wonderful time. Don't you feel good? Yeah. Oh, I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners. Let's make it everybody. You know what? I know, come here. You help me lead it, Brother Devlin. All of you together now, just raise your hand, sing it with me now. dismissing song at the name of Jesus bowing, falling prostrate at his feet, King of kings and heaven will crown him when our journey is complete. All right, everyone now together. Right. At the name of Jesus bowing, falling prostrate at just a moment. Everyone look right straight to Christ now, your Savior. In a silent way, I want you to give him thanks and praise.
Say, Lord, I so thank you for sanctifying my soul. Amen. I so thank you for all that you've done for Amen. me. Let thy spirit be upon me through the day, Lord. Guide me, direct me, bless me. God grant that blessing to you, is my prayer. Now, while we bow our heads, brother Neville, you just listen to the word of prayer.